Hello everyone, I am Ankita Rathor. I am currently working as Rural Technology Fellow under the guidance of Prof. Satish Agnihotri. It is a joint initiative of IIT Bombay and Jilha Parishad Chandrapur where we are trying to build a model for technology transfer in rural areas. About my background, I have done my bachelor's in civil engineering and then I did my master's in technology and development from Sitara in 2016. During my master's, I majorly worked in sanitation sector. For one of my research on regional planning for solid waste management, I got a scholarship to attend a winter school at University of Texas, Arlington. This research also got published as a winter school proceedings. After my master's, I continued to work as a research associate with Sitara. I worked on technical sanctioning of sanitation plan for municipal councils. It was a project with Directorate of Municipal Administration, Government of Maharashtra. My another project was evaluation of Hilliera Development Program in Maharashtra, a project with Directorate of Economics and Statistics. In this project, I assessed past 10 years data, analyzed and mapped the data at Gram Panchayat level for all the districts. I made Excel based dashboards to visualize this analysis. After this, I worked as the district lead in NASIC at the Indian Nutrition Initiative by Tata Trust. This is when I got associated with the nutrition group as my key objective was to work on rollout of Poshan Abhiyan in the district. And that's how from being a civil engineer, my journey to work in field of health and nutrition started. During Poshan Maha, I documented Mutbhar Dhanya initiative through my field visits as best practices, which was acknowledged by our Honorable Prime Minister in Man Ki Baat. Nashik also got awards at national level for its performance under various components of Poshan Abhiyan. I facilitated the district administration in caste training of ground functionaries. Nashik became the first district in Maharashtra where caste was being implemented at all the Anganwadi centers. Rollout of new programs on ground was a very unique experience for me. While working in Nashik, one day out of nowhere, I got a call from UNICEF Mumbai office about the opportunity to work as a program officer at Raj Mata Jijao Mother Child Health and Nutrition Mission under the Kundan Ma'am, Principal Secretary, Women and Child Development Deva Department, Government of Maharashtra. Professor, professor Satish Agnihotri guided me on this position where I could get a holistic experience about not only nutrition but also about policy designing, policy implementation and analysis. I was then appointed as a program officer for monitoring and evaluation in WCD task force, a think tank formed by Kundan Ma'am. Here I got a chance to analyze state level data which was being collected through CAS application. I assisted in organizing all CO meetings at the state level to review the malnutrition status and progress of Poshan Abhiyan. I was part of team who worked on government resolutions and AAA convergence. Also, Urban Child Development Center schemes for urban ICDS projects and Yashoda Mata Angat Pangal to improve the nutrition status of lactating and pregnant mothers. In my current job, now I am getting a chance to further diversify my domain knowledge. Besides nutrition, health and sanitation, I am also working in education, uh, development of Gram Panchayat and livelihood sector. If you see NFHS data, NFHS 5 data of Chandrapur, we observe that the prevalence of malnutrition children has increased compared to NFHS 4. Thus, to identify pockets where interventions are required, we decided to conduct Vajan Tevhar, a joint initiative by ICDS, Health and Education Department. I assisted district ICDS team to plan and carry out this activity. The data is now being collected and will be analyzed on the lines of Dhamtari model done by Ashish Kumar Paswan another nutrition group member. In health, I am analyzing RCH data to identify the underlying causes of maternal deaths in the district. For this, I am carrying out field research to understand the gaps in AOC services, referral systems and reporting mechanism. In field of sanitation, uh, with Swachh Bharat Mission Phase 2, Gram Panchayats are instructed to make solid waste management plans. Based on my previous work experience, I am helping the district administration to how to technically evaluate the proposals made by different agencies. For education, learning outcome in students as well as infrastructure facilities available at school level, both are equally important. 
we conducted a foundation literacy and numeracy survey where students are categorized in five different levels based on the evaluation this survey will now be conducted in every semester in all the jilla parishad schools this is to see if the teachers interventions are improving the learning outcomes with the help of diet team we also conducted infrastructure assessment based on the analysis of this data with instructions of co ma'am we took construction and repair of toilets in all the jilla parishad schools on priority for both this survey i used cobo toolbox for data collection and data visualization was done using tableau public in livelihood sector i am working with district umed team on packaging branding and marketing of shg products for trial run we organized a mini saras in jilla parishad premises in which around 150 shg products were brought and displayed by all the 15 blocks of the district just in this 3 days activity there was a record collection of 3.5 lakhs this really gave us a confidence that we can have a small shg mart at the district level the last project which is very close to my heart is about transforming 5 gram panchayat per block into model gram panchayats this project is majorly will be majorly implemented by block development officers where they will work on different aspects at gram panchayat level I helped in designing the indicators based on SDG goals. We are now conducting a monitoring. We are now conducting a progress meetings every month. All these projects are being carried out under the guidance and supervision of CEO Jilla Prashant Dr. Mitali Sethi Ma'am. It takes many discussions, review meetings, and field visits to get some impactful outcomes. visionary leadership support to officials active ground functionaries and appropriate use of technology are key ingredients of development sector my my main objective behind engaging in different sector is to transfer appropriate technology and assist district administration in smart governance thank you hello everyone my name is ashish paswan currently i am working as a state amis consultant at unicef raipur office i have done my btech from iit kanpur and my mtech from sitara iit bombay my area of expertise involve understanding the data coming up with a data based action plan capacity building of the front line workers capacity building of csr and ngo staff and communicating the data analysis with concerned stakeholders during my mtech i received a tata fellowship from tata center for technology and design iit bombay under the fellowship I got the opportunity to learn from MIT professors about how to design products for the people at the bottom of the pyramid, and we prototyped a product for visually impaired people, of which a publication has been done in the Triple E Journal. As a part of my MTech thesis, my task was to come up with a product-based approach to tackle child malnutrition. So I developed a health drink for moderately acute malnourished children. For my MTech thesis, uh, I was recommended by Professor Anjisa, my guide, to learn about science behind child malnutrition from Dr. Rupal Dalal, ma'am. She invited me for lunch, and we had discussion. And I got the task to read a paper. That's how, in within three hours, I learned about science behind child nutrition. Also, at the end of my MTech, I met Professor Agni. When he presented his work, I was quite interested in his approach. to tackle child malnutrition at administrative level so when i received a call from professor agnitri that whether i was interested in an opportunity in nutrition sector without any hesitation i said yes and that's how i became first unicef fellow so as a part of unicef fellowship i worked with uh, dhantari uh, district administration where the task was to uh, come up with a data based action plan through vision tewar data My work at Dhantari district has been presented in two international conferences one at Oxford University and what one at Dublin the work has been published uh, as conference proceeding later as a research associate i work with Azim Premji Philanthropy Initiative APPI Odisha where uh, i was given the task to come up with a uh, block level uh, nutrition action plan based on the concurrent monitoring data as well as data available in the public domain during this period i have worked with organizations such as coalition for food and nutrition security delhi office and capacity building of 
CSR and NGO staff. Being as a part of nutrition group, I help in designing website of the group as well as the various social media that are working today. My key research publications are uh, the three case study, uh, which focused on context based nutrition action plan for district as well as sub district and designing prototype device for visually impaired people and application of geospatial data for monitoring Vazantewa data and tracking of the children across the Vazantewa. This experience has been extremely helpful for me in my current position where I am providing technical assistance to the state government in capacity building of the staff as well as frontline workers and different NGO staff associated with the UNICEF. Finally, I would like to thank Professor Agnitri for being a guiding light uh, in my personal as well as professional life. I also like to thank Dr. Rupal Dalalma for teaching me like a child about the science behind child nutrition. And thanks to Professor Anjisa for connecting me with the people who were extremely helpful to me during my MTech project. And thanks to all the colleagues at Nutrition Group for coming up with ideas and doing brainstorming. Thank you for watching. Hello all, now in our analysis of the journey between NFHS 4 and NFHS 5, we are moving to individual states. And in that individual states, we will begin with Maharashtra. Maharashtra is a representative state in many senses. It uh, is not a southern state, it is not a northern state, it is somewhere in between, it is a prosperous state. So let's see how it has performed. We will begin with map of Maharashtra with districts as units and see how is the story unfolded. To begin with, we look at children under 5 years of age, underweight. Now in the NFHS 4 and NFHS 5, using the same cutoff, we see that in NFHS 5, actually a kind of decline has happened. The greener belt of western districts has shrunk. We also see a corridor which can be called the West East Corridor, roughly Nandurbar to Garchiroli or Thane to Garchiroli if you like. But that has gained during this transition. So in a sense, the eastern belt has gained while the western districts have shown considerable decline. What is the story of stunting? Let us see. Similar cutoffs, similar picture here again. We notice gainers in the eastern belt, particularly notice this uh, Nagpur, Bhandara, Amravati green patch, while the greener patch of the western uh, districts in NFHS 4 has now shrunk. Interestingly, the largish red contiguous patch in NFHS 4 towards northeast has actually uh, turned into a yellowish zone. So this is something which can be considered heartening. When we come to wasting, the story again, there is an improvement in the western districts this time, barring Pune. So my friends from Pune who keep, who are very fond of saying Pune te te kai une, that is, there is nothing which is deficient in Pune. We may point out to them that Pune needs to improve its performance as far as uh, wasting is concerned. The northern districts this time haven't fared uh, that well. And we again notice this waste east corridor, which, which will be a recurring theme as you would notice as we go along. The story in severe wasting, this is more worrying. It's, it's a matter of concern. If you notice, there are losses 
in the western districts and we also see a largish waste is patch now if severe wasting hasn't declined or in fact has gone up and wasting has declined again recall it would mean that the severely wasted children as a fraction of overall wasted children has gone up we need to look at this with some concern the story of undernutrition is one we also need to look at what nfhs tells us regarding the child mortality basically three components the neonatal mortality the infant mortality rate and the under 5 mortality rate now here we do not see any marked change in the mortality regime for the children for a state like maharashtra this would be a matter of concern because as the child mortality different segments start coming down the climb becomes more steep it becomes more uphill so therefore more efforts have to come in the second worrying factor that you notice is the gap between the urban and rural is very marginal for maharashtra now it may speak well of the rural segment but does it speak so well of the urban segment because traditionally the urban mortalities rates whether it was neonatal whether it was child or whether it was under 5 had been less in urban segment and higher in rural segment so it's in a way are we looking at the story of urban being the rabbit who halfway through the race happily slept on the mound while the rural tortoise kept on steadily moving uh, i'm not talking about who wins the race but at least they are making advances so i think this is one area which is uh, which should be a matter of concern and uh, mahara for a state like maharashtra a infant mortality rate of 20 or etc is not a is not a uh, very satisfying figure we should move towards uh, southern states uh, it should come down to 14 15 and the dream obviously should be eventually going to single digit but that's story for some later date we now come to anemia we have seen at the all india level that nfhs 5 data has shown a sharp increase in anemia and maharashtra we have done a slightly different uh, way of visualizing the map if we keep the nfhs 4 cutoffs as the same entire state goes red because more than 55 percent of children in the 6 to 59 months being anemic that happens across the state so another map gives a slightly different perspective as to how much relaxation in the cutoff can you give it's like grace marks so that more children pass if you do that then there's a very different cutoff not a very happy situation but it gives us a semblance of uh, similarity but then this is something which one needs to worry about i had earlier commented in the context of all india analysis that are we looking at some some uh, systemic uh, uh, addition or uh, some systemic issue which has overall jacked up the anemia level but uh, that's something which will require a deeper study till then if you are taking these figures um, seriously anemia is a matter of concern we see the same pattern when it comes to non pregnant women age 15 to 49 we use nfhs cutoffs nfhs 4 cutoffs practically in nfhs 5 the entire state gets into a red zone yes a small patch on the coastal uh, western side holds out but this is a small consolation we see the same pattern in the women 15 to 49 who are anemic here 
we see a number of districts where the data are not available. Now, this is something which one has to uh, be a little concerned about, but the, the pattern that we see, there's a similar story, those districts where the data are available. When it comes to all women who are in the age group of 15 to 49 years, we again see a worrying increase. And this time again, the Nandurbar, Gatchiroli, West East corridor, which comes in our story often, is once again seen here. And finally, we go to NFHS 4 and NFHS 5. What has it told for all the women in the 15 to 19 age group? Now, 15 to 19 age group is important. And here again we see, if we look at the NFHS 4 cutoffs being kept same, we see a fairly sharp deterioration as far as anemia is concerned. But this anemia story needs to be looked at a little more seriously because once again, uh, one would like to submit that the two patterns don't gel. Stunting, wasting, underweight coming down and anemia going up. Mortality levels haven't come down, but they haven't gone up. Anemia has gone up considerably. So the anemia story will require some more detailed analysis. I think this analysis at the state level with districts as a unit shows us that even within a state, there's considerable geographical diversity. So we will now from the Western uh, region, move to other regions, take one, one state each and see how the story unfolds. So keep watching this space. Thank you very much.